In this video, we're going to look at the relationship between pressure and volume. This will be the start of us considering the ideal gas law. In the last video, we saw that if an object was less dense than its surroundings, then it experienced a buoyancy force. So in the case of the hot air balloon, this buoyancy force helps to pull it up into the air and it helps to overcome that weight force, which is trying to pull it back towards the earth. So what we're going to look at in this video is how the hot air balloon becomes less dense than the surrounding air so that it experiences this buoyancy force. So what we're going to be looking at is the ideal gas law. Several people in the 15th and 16th centuries contributed to the development of the ideal gas law. Robert Boyle was one of the first. He came up with Boyle's law, which relates the pressure and the volume of a gas. He showed that the pressure times the volume was a constant. So this can be written as PV equals constant, or another way to write it is P1V1 is equal to P2V2. Let's have a look at a demonstration of this law now. What I have here is a pressure gauge, which measures the pressure. And here I have a flask. And by turning the handle, I can change the volume of the flask. Let's have a look at what happens when we decrease the volume of the flask. You can see as the volume's going down, the pressure inside the flask measured on this gauge is increasing. Now let's increase the volume of the flask. Now that that volume has increased, the pressure has decreased. So we have an inverse relationship there. As the pressure goes up, the volume goes down. Let's try solving a problem now using this equation. You buy a packet of chips at sea level. The volume of the bag is 200 millilitres. Assume that the volume of the chips in the bag is negligible compared with the volume of air. You then drive to the top of the Blue Mountains where the air has a pressure of 0 0.80 atmospheres. What is the volume of your bag of chips now? So to answer this question, we're going to have to use the relationship P1V1 is equal to P2V2. Now we buy the chips at sea level. At sea level, the pressure is equal to one atmosphere. So we've got one atmosphere times the 200 millilitres is equal to the pressure at the top of the mountain, which we're told is 0 0.8 atmospheres times the volume at the top of the mountain. So this tells us, rearranging, we've got that volume 2 is equal to 1.0 times 200 over 0 0.8, and the atmospheres will cancel out and we'll be left with the millilitres. So solving this gives us 250 millilitres. So this is why if you buy a packet of chips and then drive up a mountain, the packet actually puffs up a little bit as you go.